Welcome to our introduction to EBSCO databases. In this video, we'll show you some search tips and filters for using the EBSCO databases for this project. We'll show you how to easily export your citations from EBSCO databases to EasyBib. We'll show you how to get the true or permanent link for articles, which is called a permalink in the EBSCO databases. And last but not least, we'll show you in the toolbar where you can get a printer-friendly version of your article or simply email it to yourself. For this assignment, there are quite a few databases that you may want to explore um, for the range of research topics that are available to you. We have Academic Search Complete, Advanced Placement Source, EBSCO Environment Complete, EBSCO Image Collection, Explora Secondary, and then there's also a Galileo Advanced Search. And this is what we call a federated search tool that allows you to search multiple databases at one time. I would recommend using both the Advanced Search but as well as individually searching these databases simply because the results are sometimes a little bit different um, when you search an individual database versus using the federated or advanced search. We'll take a look at some search tips. Um, the good news is, is that in all of these EBSCO databases, the search interface is pretty much identical. So once you get the hang of the look and where the tools are and where the search filters are, then you can pretty much hit any of the EBSCO databases with ease. So let's take a look at these. Remember that when you're in our Mac and group for this assignment, you can always see which databases are published by EBSCO by looking beneath the name of the database. We also have a graphic organizer for you similar to what you just saw at the introduction of this video that will give you a list of all the EBSCO databases. So that can be a handy quick reference too. For the most part, there are slight differences between each of the academic databases through EBSCO. The primary difference is the kinds and titles of publications that they search. So while there is some overlap, sometimes from one database to another, there will also be content that is unique in each one because each database has its own library of titles and kinds of information sources that it um, contains. So let's start with Academic Search Complete, just so you can get a feel for the overall EBSCO search interface and toolbar. So again, to open any database, you can click on Open Now. So we're going to focus on this first one since it's an EBSCO database. And if you're searching individual databases, you'll get some assistance with your search terms. Much like Google, it has um, sort of an autofill and will give you suggested search terms or phrases. Let's take a look at the search interface that's available in the individual EBSCO databases. And again, we're in Academic Search Complete, but this look and this interface is pretty consistent from one database to another within the EBSCO family. At the top is our search bar and this is where we will enter our search phrase and we'll use that in just a moment but we also have options or filters to help us focus our search so on this home page the first set of filters is called search modes and expanders these are filters that can help us broaden or narrow our search so here if we click on this this tells us a little bit about the different search modes do we want a Boolean or phrase search? Do we want it to find all of the search terms? Do we want it to find any of the search terms? There's also something called smart text searching that allows you to copy and paste large chunks of text to search for results. Um, and again, it's available in some of the EBSCO databases, but as we see here, not every single one. I would recommend using the Boolean search mode because I find this tends to be um, a little bit better mode um, and it helps me get at more strategically and specifically at what I'm looking for. 
You also have the ability to tell it to search for related words, so synonyms or plural variants of words. You might want to try that. You can also have it tell EBSCO to search within the full text of the article, so it could look for those phrases within that. Again, you might want to experiment and look at the difference in results with that search feature turned off or on. And then last but not least, do you want it to search subjects that might be related or in the family related to the topic that you're looking for? Again, I like to experiment with these filters and compare the differences in results I'm getting um, because, again, depending on my topic and the search phrase or terms that I'm using, sometimes those filters are helpful and other times they may be a little bit too limiting or might cause me to miss something. So I recommend playing around with it and trying a little bit of both. The next set is definitely something um, to utilize, and we have the ability to, again, kind of restrict our results. Um, I always check full text because I want to have access to articles that I can read in their entirety. Sometimes you may see results that we do not have access to the entire article for. Um, you would have to maybe be a student enrolled at a college or a university to do that. If your teacher gives you a mandate to find peer-reviewed journals, and sometimes that is a requirement um, for high school assignments, and it definitely will be a requirement you'll get at the college level, this allows you to get articles that come from only peer-reviewed journals, which is um, a long process designed to um, help articles be published that have been reviewed by experts in the field, both the data and the research design. Peer-reviewed journals typically will give you higher confidence in the integrity of the research that you're reading. If there was a specific publication you were looking for or the name of a journal, you could enter it there. That's typically something you'll use more as a college student. Um, you also have the ability to tell um, EBSCO, do you want articles that have references available? So do they have a works cited page? Uh, you may or may not want to check that. And then you can also filter by publication date. So if you only want articles from, say, the last five years, you could put in a date range. Um, and if you wanted to be super specific, you could include month, but typically year is fine. And do you want it to search for all kinds of articles, or do you want it to limit it to periodicals, newspapers, books, primary sources, reports? Again, you can try those search filters if you want to. There are other types of filters by pa number of pages. So if you had a minimum number of pages your articles had to be, you could do that. That's not going to be a requirement for us. And then there are filters related to images. I typically just leave these as they are. Okay. Now I can type in my search term. So let's say that I'm interested in child trafficking. You can see that as I begin to type, EBSCO is going to ask me, do you want just child trafficking? Or am I looking for something more specific, maybe by region or a concept related to child trafficking? Right now, I'm just going to roll with child trafficking. I'm going to start broad, and then I can begin to narrow that down just a bit. So as you can see, because I narrowed um, and used some of those search expanders and filters at the beginning of my search, I have a reasonable number of results that I could browse through or skim and scan. There are usually 10 per page. However, if at any time you want to further change um, those uh, search uh, t filters or expanders, then you can use the toolbar on the left to do that. So if you wanted to take off any of your expanders or limiters, you can hit the X to remove those. Okay. If you want to add or make adjustments, you can also do that here. So maybe I want to up the publication date just a little bit. Then that takes it down slightly. Or if I want to focus maybe just on a specific type, a publication type, I could certainly do that here. And you can also hit short, show more to see additional categories. And again, if you wanted to select one of those, then you could do that. Right now, maybe I'm going to say just give me academic journals right now. And again, I could always take that off. 
So this has cut my results in half. Okay. Um, additional filters that you may want to look at. Um, sometimes this is helpful, this subject filter, um, not, because you might want to use it to um, focus your articles by this one of these categories. These are subject headings, just like print books receive subject headings, what they're about. So do database articles. So if you wanted to hone in, maybe if you were interested in law and legislation, um, or maybe a human rights angle, you could do that. Um, sometimes that is helpful to do. Um, or again, the source terms related to subject. Um, and then if you wanted to add additional subject filters, so maybe if there was a specific country, again, or category you're interested in, you could do that there. Um, right now, I'm going to roll with this because 86 is kind of a nice uh, number to, of articles to work with. Um, and again, if I want to make changes or further alter my search, I could do that at any time. So I'm going to take a look and see what might be available. So now we're focusing, let's say, on child trafficking um, in Thailand because I'm interested in that region of the world and I could do that. And when you open the article, you see the publication information. You will also see additional subject terms. Sometimes this is helpful either to begin a brand new search. You could click on that hyperlink and initiate an entirely new search using that subject term. You could also utilize the author supplied keywords. And just like the subject terms, these can initiate an additional search. If you don't want to initiate an additional search from these keywords or subject terms, you might consider incorporating them into a new search that you might be doing at a later time. When you're developing your search vocabulary, looking at the subject terms and the keywords can be really helpful in assisting you in developing strategic and effective search terms or phrases. All of our articles in the EBSCO databases are available as PDF, full text, or HTML. Sometimes you have a choice of both. This is where you get the article in its entirety. The abstract, which you see here, is just a brief synopsis or summary of the article. It is not enough to read just the abstract. We use the abstract to decide if we want to bother to open and read the article. If you decide you want to read the article, you'll click either on PDF or HTML. And now we can scroll or we can use our arrows or page tool to look at that article. Okay. If you want to download the article, you can do that here. You can also print it directly from here. But you also have your toolbar over here on the right. We have our printer friendly option. We have the ability to email it. If you want the permanent link, which is called a permalink in the EBSCO databases, to get you back to that article, you click on the paper clip and you could copy and paste that into a Google document. This is not the true link, <laughs> this is here. And then, most importantly, to add this to your EasyBib uh, working bibliography, You'll look above the paper clip and choose the export tool. You want to make sure that you have the bibli bibliography open for your project. And once you have that open, then from the export manager, you're just going to go directly to the direct export to EasyBim and select save. This is going to ask you if you want to import the abstract. We do not, so leave that exactly the way it appears and then press import. And automatically, your entry is imported and saved automatically in EasyBib. There is a little help here tool for making sure that the article is imported correctly. And if you need to make any changes to the capitalization, because APA is pretty nitpicky about what should be capitalized in a citation. If you find that you need to make any changes, you can go to Edit and then make any adjustments to the capitalization here. In editing mode, you also have the ability to again get that permalink if you want it, and if you're required to write an annotation, then you can access it here. Otherwise, just hit update to save or exit out of the entry, and then you can continue searching. You can use your back arrow 
and the result lists breadcrumb at the top of your search results to resume browsing your articles. That's a quick look at searching an individual database from EBSCO. If you're going to use the federated search, then this is Galileo Advanced. This will search multiple databases, and you'll notice that there are no filters here on this home page. So just so you can kind of see the difference, it will take you into that EBSCO interface, so this should look familiar, but you're definitely going to need to work the search filters here a little bit more. The advantage of the advanced Galileo search is that it does allow, allow you to search a lot of EBSCO databases at once. The drawback is that, again, you do have to work your filters a little bit more because clearly 200,000 results is quite a bit. However, one thing I like about the federated search is that they typically will push up to the top what's called a research starter or an overview of your topic in a broad sense. So this can be helpful if you don't really know a lot about your topic and you just kind of want to get a nice overview or a brief introduction. And again, these can be exported to EasyBib just like a regular article. Otherwise, you can begin working your expanders and your filters if you want to do that. I may tell it, no, don't search the full text of the articles, or maybe I don't want it to search related subjects. So I'm going to take that off. And now that's clearly cut it down quite a bit, 200,000 to 14,000. I definitely want to choose full text. And I definitely want to bring that publication date up a little bit. And again, you can kind of keep playing with that. So now I've gone from 200,000 to 6,000 with my filters. Again, I might want to bump that a little bit more. And again, it may take just a moment to refresh. And then you can limit by type. So maybe I just want journal, academic journals again, or maybe I want just magazines. Again, I like to play with these filters and expanders just to see how it impacts the kinds of results that I'm getting. Um, and it is a little bit of trial and error, um, but that's the nature of search. <laughs> um, it's a lot of experimenting and kind of fine-tuning, just like when you're cropping a photo and adding filters in Instagram. Sometimes it takes a few efforts to kind of get the right look that you're, that you're um, going for. So that's pretty normal. Try not to let it frustrate you um, and enjoy the journey of discovery. Again, if you want to narrow by the subjects, then you could certainly do that. So again, we could kind of or maybe narrow that down a little bit more. And now that's taking it down quite a bit. And again, if you find that the results are too narrow, you can always um, expand or remove some of those filters that you have applied. So that's what it looks like in the advanced search. The last feature I just want to show you, um, we have a EBSCO search tool called Explore Secondary. This is also a type of federated search, um, not quite as comprehensive as Galileo Advanced. But it's EBSCO's special interface, but a lot of students like it um, because it's kind of visual and student friendly. So let me just show you this search interface very quickly. In many ways, as you'll see, this is very similar to the Gale database search interface with kind of a current topic, kind of a nice clean visual look, and you can browse topics by these broad categories. Sometimes people like to do that. Um, otherwise, um, you can jump right in to the search interface up here. If you do decide to search by category, you can always click on more to kind of expand that out to see what are some of the most common topics. So if I want current issues, then I could go to that category and see what might be available, kind of different um, topics. Otherwise, again, I can just go directly up here, and again, it will start um, at prompting me for search terms. So that's something that's a little different from the advanced Galileo federated search, 
Again, this is EBSCO's on, own special um, little federated search. And again, this doesn't search as much as the advanced Galileo search, but some students really like um, to use that tool. So that may be something that you want to explore too. The EBSCO databases take a little bit of work to mine, but they are also the most robust and there is so much fantastic content in here. If you feel like you're getting overwhelmed or struggling, you can come and see me, Ms. Hamilton, in the Media Center. If I'm not here with you um, in your classroom or uh, here with you in the Media Center, you can also contact me via email. My email link is on every page in our LibGuide, um, and I can assist you through email um, if it's after hours or if I'm away from campus. Thank you for taking time to watch this virtual mini lesson on the EBSCO databases.